Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. Today we're going to be slicing up this big silver maple. So my buddy Eric has been telling me he has some big logs that would potentially challenge my mill for a while. We finally had some time to get together. Eric went and picked up this log this morning and brought it by. We're going to have a little fun today and slice this guy up. So this is the biggest log that's ever been on my saw. It is four feet across at the base. It splays up to a crotch, which is about five feet wide, and then it continues up to a second crotch at the top. The whole thing is 12 feet long, and to capture the entire shape of the log, it's gonna require a six foot cut width. The estimated weight on this log is about 7,000 pounds, which is a bit over 3,000 kilos for all you metric folk. So let's take a quick walk around the log and see what we got here. Since we're just having fun today, I normally would probably roll this log a little bit to raise this limb so it's a little more parallel to the cut. But since we're just kind of having fun today, we're just going to cut it as it lays right now. Now up here on this upper crotch section where some of the bark is missing, you can see some of these uh, like quilt lumps here. So it should have some figure up in here at least. Now we walk around to the other side, we can see how much of the saw this thing is going to take. You can see on the left side, we're pretty much all the way over. And then over here on the right side, you have a little bit of space left and it does floor out there at the bottom. So with this thing reasonably well positioned, we can go ahead and make the first cut. The log does have a bit of a curve to it in this orientation, so I'm aiming for the first cut to come to the bottom of that curve. Ho ho ho! Very nice. It's also just a little bit longer than the total travel on my saw. I think it's actually longer than 12 feet. But there is a partial cut at the bottom, so we'll cut until we get into that section and then we can kind of work around that uh, weird bottom half cut section area down there. So what we're doing with these first few slabs is separating them into tabletop and like coffee table sizes. So this guy around here is the second slab coming off. That's a little coffee table. And underneath there is gonna be a little dining table. <laughs> and there's the other half that's gonna be another dining table. And then there is the next one off of there. So this is gonna be an absolutely beautiful table uh, very shortly. <laughs> Some really nice bar conclusions in here from that extra limb coming off. And then we got a second bar conclusion up here, which is just absolutely beautiful. One thing I like about silver maple is that you start getting some reds and pinks kind of showing through, which is just a really nice and interesting visual look to things. This is anger management, uh, sawmill style. Let's see if this side goes. I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. And left hand. Oh, I'll see here. Let me see. Let me give a good one. Feels good though. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what we got in here. Oh, I love the red. Man, that's beautiful. So down here, what I absolutely love is this bark conclusion through here, which provides a little bit of figure around it towards the top side here, but 
What's absolutely amazing is the heartwood that we're starting to get into now with the reds and the blues and all of these little mineral lines through here. Absolutely beautiful. Coming through the middle, we got another bark inclusion with some more figure up here as we're starting to get into the crotch area of this limb that's coming off right here. And then back towards the top, we're back into some more of the heartwood, which is just absolutely gorgeous. So just for fun on here, let's get some, uh, some width measurements. We got uh, 40 inches down here. We're up at uh, 40 here in the middle and then up here on this little, little area, <laughs> it's 36. <laughs> oh man, and when we get down into here, we're gonna be at almost five feet. So it's, let's keep cutting. Wow, that is beautiful. <laughs> this is nice. That is nice. I like those weed trees. So here's a little look at this guy. Getting pretty beautiful. And they're only gonna get bigger from here. Man, that just comes to life. Boy, that is nice. We're starting to get some serious figure over here from this, this limb over here. Here's a quick look at this guy. Hopefully you can see it's not too bright out here, but there is some figure starting to form right here where this bark inclusion is starting to end. we will really get into this crotch section right there, which should be pretty cool in the next few slabs. And again, some really nice figure with all of this streaking through here in the middle as we're getting into the heartwood. This stuff is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. All right, I see this guy. It's like we're getting some figure up here where this crotch is starting. The figure down here. Oh. Yeah, this is beautiful. You got you got to check us out. You got to check us out. We got some crotch figure starting to form through here. Just incredible. And with a little more of this bark inclusion as we're getting into this limb, and you're starting to see a little banding of crotch figure coming down through here. So that's indicative that we're gonna see some good stuff in the next few slabs. Not like this is like not good stuff, but man, that is crazy. It's so big.
Drop it down, man. Breaks, breaks. All right, let's see what we got. Incredible. That's pretty ridiculous. So right up here we got a nice little bit of crotch figure coming through from that limb. And then we're starting to get some serious stuff down here. Sun's not cooperating for me here. But see we're getting some serious nice heartwood going on through here with a nice band of the white sapwood. And then this nice bit of figure from this limb coming through here with a little bit of crotch figure trying to expose itself here. And it's really awesome bark inclusion up through here. Beautiful stuff. All right, we got a few more to load. How many got? Three more? more. Three more for today. Ready? Yep. Whoa. I got a door. I think I know that. Yeah, so Eric was just saying how it's kind of hard to get a grasp on how wide this is. This trailer is wide enough to drive a car up between the fenders. So, I should give you some perspective on how wide this thing is. It, it is, it's as wide as a car. We basically just cut a car in half. <laughs> so we got some really nice figure around this bark inclusion right through here in the middle, which is just pretty ridiculously amazing. And then coming up here, this is cool. There is, I can't see anything, it's too, the sun. So coming up through here, we got this amazing bark inclusion, which terminates and as it's terminating, we start getting into some figure and you can see it transitions into this nice crotch figure all the way down through here. Beautiful stuff. I really like the reddish hues of the silver maple. All right, let's see this guy. It looks like we got a sweet bark inclusion in this one and a bit of crotch figure. Oh yeah. That is crazy nice. It's like a half a heart. So yeah, look at that. We got, this is all quarter on, so this whole left and right section towards the center here is the pith. Well, towards the center here is the pith and then everything to the right and the left is all quarter on. So we got some really nice straight grain stuff all the way through the whole length here. And on this side, we start having a nice curve with the grain. We got some nice bark inclusion with a, a whole bunch of figure around it which is just really cool. <laughs> and then coming up here, we're greeted visually with another bark inclusion, which has some pretty nice figure around it as well. And then we got this last one here for today. That is, that is big. Oh, I got you. Oh. Here is the, probably one of the nicest ones so far. Got a little bit of bark inclusion, but some nice crotch figure surrounding it. Just some really nice color and figure throughout the entire slab. Whew. Coming down here, we got a little bit of a double kind of thing going on with this really nice long bark inclusion, which is beautiful. It's been about two weeks and we're going to get back to sawing this thing. Going to be making some uh, interesting cuts this time. We'll be cutting at a half inch thick. This Eric's going to try and make some sweet, custom, thin, thick veneer stuff that he's going to dry in his fancy vacuum kiln press thingy.
scratch my slabs. Yeah, don't scratch my slabs. So this stuff is pretty incredibly thin. Here's a off cut just for scale. That's about a half inch thick. Boom, tape. So we're at right at a half inch thick right now. And as far as cut accuracy goes, kind of sliding down the edge here. I mean, this doesn't look like it's wavering at all. So that's a pretty reasonably accurate cut. Let's take a look at the, uh, the color and stuff. This stuff is gorgeous. So although it's been two weeks, I feel like I've already forgotten how nice this stuff looks because I am uh, kind of shocked right now. Got some, the heartwood in this is absolutely beautiful. That reds and pinks. We got a nice bit of crotch figure here with some bark inclusions. And then there's a really nice band of crotch figure above this rot pocket here, which is absolutely beautiful too. Let's see what this one's got going on. So because we're only moving through the log at a half inch at a time, there's not gonna be a whole lot of change between these slabs. Just kind of a, a different change of pace. But once again, got some nice heartwood, some nice crotch figure with the bark inclusion, and again up here, some more nice crotch figure. How's that? Slaps further in now. <laughs> Hopefully, there'll be something a little bit different at this point. I think it's getting nicer. The further down we get, the nicer they get. It's bark inclusion with the scratch figure. It's beautiful. It's nice. Look how thin this is. <laughs> That's so thin. Don't worry, I'll get it for you. You got it? <laughs> There you go, it's my slab mover. <laughs> All right, I think this might be the last piece of thin veneer we're gonna cut, so let's take a, take a quick look at this guy. Gah! <laughs> there we go. This is some pretty clear stuff too, and I mean, I've already said all the stuff. There's that bar conclusion again, which is beautiful. And we got some more kind of tapering off of the crotch figure up here. That's what's left of it right there. And now we're kind of getting through these, uh, these limbs over here. So this has got a complete side. And then on this side, we're kind of through it all. And we're kind of running out of material. So we're going to get thin on this side. This will be the last thin piece. And we'll just whack a few regular size slabs out of this thing and call this one good. Okay, I lied. We're gonna cut a few more of these thin slabs because they're pretty cool.
it's been a couple of weeks once again and I finally have some time to get out here and finish this thing up. So let's go ahead and make the last few cuts on this log to get this thing off my mill. <laughs> it's been on here for like a month. So you probably saw this one sort of popped as I got out of the cut. What's happening here is this top face has been sitting out in the sun for so long that it is dried more than the inside of the log. So this area is pulling together and shrinking and the bottom isn't. So this has a nice little cup in it right now. It's not a huge deal because the rest of the log was still holding it flat as I was making that cut. It was only when I got to the end of the cut that it actually went boop and released. Um, so the thickness is still consistent all the way down. So that won't be a huge problem. That should come out in the drying process as this thing kind of equalizes and moisture leaves the other side. It'll find its way back into flat. So let's get uh, these slabs out of the way and take a look and see what we got. All right. Just as beautiful as I remember. Let's get some water. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, this was a nice log. A lot of interesting stuff going on in this guy. So we got some nice mineral staining coming in from the cut on the bottom. And we got some of these cool little mineral streak things all throughout here. Beautiful stuff. A nice crack around through the crotch here. With some staining coming through here, which I think is just a really cool detail. A little bit of figure up top. Up in these parts, we got a little knot, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah, just an overall pretty cool shape. It's a shapely slab. So that was the last of the larger main slabs. So I think what I'll do now is just saw up some of these offcuts and get whatever I can out of them. Maybe some fun little slabs or, or something, we'll see. Anything I can do to avoid cutting more things in the firewood, because ain't nobody got time for that. Eric ran all the slabs through his vacuum kiln, which also features a press, which holds the lumber inside the kiln flat as the vacuum dries it. The built-in press allows for this white stuff to be dried completely flat without turning into a potato chip like they would if they were dried any other way. The thin pieces were then sent through the wide belt sander to clean them up and bring them down to a final thickness. Eric took a sequential pair of the thin slabs and glued them to the front and back side of a pre-hung hollow core door that he got at the home center. He then built a form around the door so it could pour an epoxy to fill in the voids. And I think this is the first time I've ever ended one of these sawmill videos with a completed project. So here is Eric's door. It's got about a quarter inch thick of epoxy with a quarter inch thick piece of uh, slab, I guess. And that is a fully assembled two-sided door with doorknob and everything. So that's kind of a fun concept of what can be done with a thin slab like this stuff. This guy here is also something that he made. This is a piece of wall art, but it could be a tabletop or really uh, anything else like that. This is just a piece of that thin slab 
that's been glued down to a piece of plywood and it has an epoxy pour around it. So some pretty cool and interesting concepts and I'll be sharing more of this in the future as we work on this uh, concept. Since I'm able to cut really wide and he's able to dry really wide, really thin, nice and flat, it's uh, kind of an interesting collaboration that we are working on. So this was a little bit of a crazier, interesting sort of sawmill adventure. The biggest log that was up there on the mill cut without a problem and resulting in some really interesting and unique pieces of wood. And it's really cool to be able to go from a log to a finished piece like this really quickly. This was done about a month after the log was cut and this thing's been sitting here for about a month uh, since it was actually built. So that's kind of a kind of a cool thing to see what was a tree not too long ago become an actual functional piece of uh, someone's home. So I think it's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on thin uh, slabs or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Hey, is anybody there? Anybody there? Oh.